Good afternoon, high performance computing fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We are here coming to the conclusion of day three of our three days of coverage on the Cube. It has been a fantastic week. My name is Savannah Peterson here with John Furrier. I love doing this show with you every year. Yeah, this show is all about the, the technology and show me the show me the evidence that the scale could be there with artificial intelligence, machine learning just exploding on the scene. The demand for high performance, scalable fabrics, networking is huge. And we've been pointing out networking is the key. This topic will be great. This segment should address. Well, it doesn't all that. work if the networking doesn't <laughs> work. So it, it's absolutely imperative. Jim and Hamill, thank you so much for taking the time to come hang out with us. Our pleasure to be here. Absolutely. It's probably been a busy week for you too. That <laughs> is. But <laughs> not a stop crazy. <laughs> in a good way. In a lot of excitement here. Yeah. Yes, and I feel a little bit like you saying that, I feel like what we do now is a little more mainstream. You know, we used to kind of be like the cool nerds in the corner talking about That's stuff, right. and now I feel like everyone's kind of interested in what we're doing. That's right. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about the partnership. Y'all have been working together for a while. They get this lot. Well over a decade. decade. Plus. <laughs> yeah, I was going to I was thinking I can, I can remember ex ex at least 15 years at least myself, and I'm sure it went before that. So, yes. Yeah. Or it's two decades. Right. Uh, right. Uh, so, not a casual amount of time. No. We've obviously gone through a lot of different innovation cycles, hype curves, everything else. Here we are in AIML workload land. Talk to me about what you two are working on specifically right now. And Hamel, I'll start with you. So yeah, on, on the AIML, last year we talked about HPC. Uh, we were working on the networking, how we build this big fabric, because AIML is all about scale, right? And so Dell and Broadcom, with our other partners, we are working to build really high bandwidth, high network utilized fabrics. And in partnership, what we'll bring together is a lot of the software integration the whole diagnostic, monitoring of the fabric, which makes life easy for deployments, right? So that's what we have been working together for a while, and now we have a validated design which is already public. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, it's a big deal. How, how you know, we're, we're at a, an era where we're not just going up incrementally, but real orders of magnitude in terms of, of scale. How are you managing and collaborating on those performance requirements? I'll turn to you, Jim, just to kick us off. Absolutely, and we're so happy to be here. We had so much fun last year when we were here talking about this, as Hamal said. And, well, that's uh, exactly why we made sure you came back again. <laughs> and we love fun people. Yes, and we predicted that when we came back, we would be talking about, about a hitter gig, and that's definitely one of our topics today. So, But yeah, the large-scale fabrics are, are critical. Uh, we, um, I'll, I'll start by just saying, you know, one reference diagram that we have, which is based off of a, a great key collaboration that we have, uh, where we run, say, the Tomahawk 6 uh, ASIC in our, uh, our new switch, the Z9864. Uh, we worked very closely, you know, with that. We launched that about a quarter ago, and we're seeing, you know, the sales are going like that. And on t running on top of that switch is the OS called Sonic, which is you know based off of open source, uh, open standards, uh, and uh, we also collaborate with Broadcom on that. Uh, and then to manage that, management being so key, we have SFM, Smart Fabric Manager, and so that brings the whole picture in terms of the latest NPUs, the latest software developments based on open standards, and the latest fabric management under under one solution. Talk about the, um, the uh, Ethernet role of networking and the AI fabric, specifically the low latency and the scalability are two areas people are talking a lot about. Yep. What have you guys done there this year? What's different? Uh, because you're starting to see the AI factory come into, into, into visibility. You got the whole factory here in a truck and the booths yep. showing the new products. You brought the steak to the party, as they say, sizzle in the steak. What's you're the, making what, me hungry. What is the, the second time. What, talk about the advancements on the AI fabric and the Ethernet piece because it, latency and Performance. Is that it? Yeah, so. You know, take first up. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to. Jump uh, off. We, we'll start with the fabric, right? So latency and performance is already there. And I, I brought some of the things. I was here. just going to say, will you show us this toy? So oh, this is yeah. 51.2 <laughs> terabits per second, Tomahawk 5, which is in production with Dell switches. May we take a look at that? Sure. Can I touch it? Yes. You have to give yeah. it back. Yes, I mean, what? No, I'm kidding, I'll hold this up for the guys here to get a little ISO if you'd like, so we can see what we're working with. They'll even give That's you the Dell power switch, right? Well. The Dell power switch, yes. yeah, All right. okay. So let's start with that. That's the fabric component, right? And then you are going to build two tier, three tier networks here with this, this is switches sweet. in the middle. These are high radix switches. They have a lot of telemetry uh, features which help the congestion control. 
And also in network now, as you go to large scale, you have so many paths. So this switches have in intelligent load balancing algorithms which allow you to utilize the network the exact best. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was just going to see if you're talking. That'll be on eBay in about 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is one of that yeah. kind of endpoint schedule fabric you build. But some customer want to build, this is the Jericho 3 AI. So where Switch itself has all the congestion control and transport logic in there, and your connectivity to there is 400 gig, 800 gig. So here is another one. So these are two different types of fabrics you build. Oh, fun. That's one part. And then there is the NIC, which yeah. is providing you the RDMA features. 400 gig now, 800 gig in the future. Uh, so together, all of this come together to give oh, you the up, fabric. Sorry. And then all the software you put around and integrate yeah. with the components from Broadcom, from the GPU vendors, as well as Dell. That makes the whole solution stack how you run the fabric. And, and the routing piece is still there, act, uh, adaptive routing still features? Adaptive routing is a feature okay. of the switches. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's awesome, yeah. So, so cool. did, did you intentionally make it so reflective I could check my lipstick <laughs> as you passed it over? <laughs> that was extremely <laughs> thoughtful of That you. is very Really, really right. inclusive in <laughs> your design right, over there. Please, you know, help yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so Jim, and the, if I'm putting together an AI factory, the power switch is key to that piece, right? So I got, Absolutely. I got the clusters, yeah. Power switch with the Broadcom, has the fabrics, compute, GPU, storage, fabrics, all kind of built in. Take That's me right. through the role of that switch. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. And, and we all realize that there are options out there, but really what, where you want to end up is a completely certified, validated solution. So you take the guesswork out. This is really going to work. Yeah. I'm plugging in Legos here and there. Yeah. You know, if you're doing that, then you know you're rolling the dice. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm not good at crap, so I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah. I go to Vegas. Um, By the way, GPUs they can't be wrong. They got to be right all the time because they got to be working. They're producing job job completion. Very the expensive. K, the KPI everyone's talking about here. So like, yes. no job completion. The GPU is going to be out of cycle. I mean, all kinds of inefficiencies. Right. Right. So, so that's one of the areas where Dell can bring kind of the full picture, the whole solution to bear, a fully certified solution. You know, I mean, Dell is an absolute leader in the server market, absolute leader in the storage market, you know, pushing the, the boundaries of the, the fabric that, you know, you want more than paperweight. You want these things to talk to each other. Yeah. And that's where... Oh my gosh, yeah, most expensive paperweight ever, if that's the case. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know, and consuming a lot of power. So, you know, getting the right fabric in there is absolutely critical. So. Uh, that's so you got right. the advanced networking hardware, you got the Broadcom relationship with the chips and software. That's right. Where's the, um, every year you guys do a great job of increasing, the raising the bar on performance. What's, where, where do we go from here? Yeah, what's kind of, yeah. what's, uh, what's, what are you guys working on now? Because this is an engineering show and, the, and engineering wins customers. That's what we're seeing here because again, the areas that we're solving is space, energy, and price performance. These areas, people sure. are working hard on this is where it's, this is the, these are the high stakes of this, of this game, so to yeah. speak. These are gambling analogy. You miss one of them. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> you are out. I mean, Single talk elimination. About, talk about craps. I mean, this is, these are the three hardest areas that, that everyone in the show is working on. What's, right. Right. what's, what's the engineering focus? Well, jump in. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of different areas that he's got privy to some great data, but uh, a couple areas that I see coming for sure. Um, is, uh, we talked about 800 last year, and yeah, we've released 800 now, okay? But do you see 800 to the servers today? No. Because of that little Nick thing, we need the next generation. He could talk about exactly when that comes and what that means, but you need that to get to the server. Um, but the, you know, 800 is available in the fabric. We'll double that. They'll talk about that. He'll have a new piece of silica next year. That's still your thunder. But really, an area that is super exciting is the Ultra Ethernet Consortium. And honestly, Broadcom is leading the Ultra Ethernet Consortium with peers in the industry doing a fantastic job. Dell also participates in that. Um, how big is that consortium? Oh, that is a good question. Do you know how many members? <laughs> it's hundreds of companies. <laughs> Whoa, really? It has yeah. grown very fast. Yeah. yeah. That's lot of awesome. Companies. Wow. Yeah. But the good news is that, you know, I mean, the fear was that, oh, there's going to be a bunch of cats in there. They're never going to resolve it. I think that they've done a good job of uh, resolving down, and so we're expecting to see a, a ratified draft by Q1, or in Q1 of this year. And yeah. so that is great, because now we can take kind of the best and brightest ideas that we know are working, get everybody on the same page. You know, a lot of stuff coming from 
Amal's work, honestly, is, is going to make it in there. And so, you know, we know that it's going to be a quality spec that we can use. That'll help lower the, lower the threshold in terms of bringing um, additional quality to Ethernet. And I think of it really as like a, you know, McLaurin's a big Dell fan, you know, they're very public about it. Uh, you know, they have a fantastic race car today. Next year, it'll be a whole new car, right? They're going to make it better. They're going to yeah. get additional telemetry. They're going to implement new things. And that's how I view Ultra Ethernet. Um, IP is firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah. But this yeah. takes us to a whole new level, so. And F1's in Vegas this weekend. Are you going? Uh, I'm, I'm going to pop in. Maybe I'll be there uh, this weekend. Yeah, oh, I'm heading up there. Yeah, I'll be there. we go. That's Vegas. great. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. The, um, you mentioned herding, like you said cats, which maybe you think yeah. herding the cats. I know, I, yeah, I love so, it. So, I, because I think this is a huge topic. In fact, the Wall Street Journal had an article, Dave brought this up in our podcast uh, uh, two days ago. It said, um, it isn't just about the data center. AI's plumbing needs an upgrade. It's funny, and they actually got an error in the story. I want to call it out, but because it comes up here, it mentions InfiniBan, and it says Infin <laughs> InfiniBan is, is moving large amounts of data. They're talking about NVIDIA. And then it says Ethernet, comma, a competing platform considered less mature for AI network. And clarify this, because this is not less mature. Ethernet is the most mature right. um, standard. And it's not hurting cats when everyone is open and wants to go there. So right. th that consortium is working because there's no need to herd. They're all, it's a stampede to the to the answer because yeah. <laughs> that's where it's going because everyone wants open. Let's talk about the ethernet maturity because the speeds are coming faster. You guys are doing that at Broadcom. We covered that before. But the importance of open, yeah. open ecosystem and why that makes ethernet a better topology. Yep. Yep. So for jump ball. Yeah. I'll, yeah. So. Of course, Ethernet is our religion. <laughs> as so Ethernet is built on open standard, not on the net open ecosystem. Yeah. And uh, one of the things we talk about speeds and feeds and 800 gig, 400 gig. But that's not the only thing. When you start looking at the AIML networking, the scale becomes very important. And that's where some of the shortcomings of InfiniBand will become visible. What we are seeing right now, 10K GPU cluster is going to be 1 million GPU cluster going forward. Ethernet with UEC and other kind of features is going to have more resiliency in the network, fabric resiliency. How quickly you adapt to the link failures, that will decide your job completion time. Also, the transport enhancements that are coming with RDMA is going to make long distance because geographically you won't be able to fit 1 million GPUs in one distance, in one area, right? So you will be now talking about going this data over yeah. like hundreds of kilometers. So that's where another set of enhancements that are coming on yeah. the ethernet side is going to be able to allow you to do that. And finally, the congestion control. No. Ethernet has always done well with the open telemetry-based end-to-end congestion control. We'll continue to enhance that. These things all together is going to take, it's going to really make AI ML networking deploy at large scale with ethernet. Yeah, and the geography they just right. point out that distributed computing architectures are now the standard. You have to be connected. Yes. And this is a huge piece. It's a huge it's part of the puzzle. But so I didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to amplify that point. Absolutely, you're you're spot on. And and let's be clear, I mean Ethernet, there's no debate that Ethernet is the de facto standard for you know all things Ethernet uh networking. You know, they over the last 25, 30 years, they won. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there are niche niche uh Opportunities where where things are you know show up like InfiniBand and and you know we can we can list a, a bunch of others but if you stack up all the networks IP is by far the dominant player. Yeah, yeah, and the performance is there too. So the whole idea, yeah. I mean, right. again, we've we've crushed the InfiniBand debate on the cube here many times. Yeah, so yes. we don't need to go there. But the point is, is that just the mainstream media just get yeah you know, they just didn't get it right. I mean, that's the whole point. This is a huge. Yeah. The networking is so important for the clusters that if you don't get it right, the whole GPU purchase fails. That's right. And it That's fails right. to do its job and why it was hired for. This is, a, again, it seems like a, a small line item from a dollar standpoint, but it's a critical yeah. piece of the puzzle because it's inside the cluster and also outside, to your point, Emil. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, I mean, y'all have been collaborating together for such a long time. Do you think that, the and, and you've seen a lot of different eras of technology, do you think that our current AI moment that we're having right now is accelerating the collaboration in these consortiums to get to a place of, of collective betterment? I think we're going to get Absolutely, because 
Yeah. Well, James can say. <laughs> yeah. But what we were talking about, in, let's do this in three years. Now we are talking about, let's do this in the next six months or a year. And that is literally how it works. That's literally. literally. And we were that's talking awesome. about, about yeah. these features. Now we are talking about how about this set of features and so many things yeah. happening so fast. Yeah. And th that's what we have been working together and trying to accelerate. Yeah. It is interesting. I mean, I felt, felt like we had all kind of settled into, okay, this is what it takes to, to make an ASIC and to do a feature and to integrate and con converge solutions. And then when the opportunity came with the whole AI explosion, we realized we can do it a whole lot faster. I mean, every single company that we're, we're working with is like, you, you're doing it how fast? And that's the way it's working. And you know, these, these solutions, they're, they're quality solutions. So my, fi my final question to you guys, again, this is another you know, jump ball, but I love both of you to weigh in on it. Fabrics was a, a networking thing, especially when you start to get into the core, hardcore infrastructure where everyone's playing right now, that's where the innovation is. As the fabrics evolve and become a, a, almost adaptive in quotes, but these clusters are going to be built for large scale and they're going to have a lot of multi-purpose workloads that may look different at any given time. Yeah. So adaptive fabrics, that's my word, it's not actually an industry word yet, but it the, can be now. You're starting to see you're starting to see these clusters have all the fabrics. It's not just the plug into the network, the fabrics define the glue in, in the work for the workload. So this is, becomes a huge part of the, the learning, the architecture. Talk about the importance of the fat role of the fabric generally, and then how people manage it and what's the future look like for the fabrics. Have you been sitting in on my customer meetings? No. <laughs> these these are I've had that same discussion several times uh, in the last two days. And uh, I'm gonna let him off jump yeah. in first. So Fabric, uh, as you mentioned, right? Fabric management becomes a huge challenge for anybody who is deploying this at scale. So you have to make it easy. Good. Easy to deploy, easy to monitor, easy to manage. Also, when what you call adaptive, you need to now have Fabric smart enough that they have built-in resiliency. The transport or reliability is also built in. And a lot of this, you don't make it visible to end yeah. customer because all they want to do is run their workload. Yeah. They don't want to worry about, oh, this link went down or so. So these are the kind of intelligence through software, we bring it in yeah. and then take that into account and make fabric deployment easy and make fabric running all the time. We, we don't have enough time, but I'd love to do a dedicated segment on resilience because resilience has been a cyber thing, like that's ransomware, backup and recovery, kind of came from the storage side, but no one's really nailed that gen AI resilience story. What is resilience in AI? I mean, up and down the stack, because you got it. Okay, that's quite a question. That is, I mean, we got to get right, to it. Yeah, I was going to say, but, I was going to say, uh, so that's again, Tuesday. That's an hour podcast. Yeah. 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 get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know we don't have time, I don't know if they ask the question, but this is an open question. Yeah. Because resilience is business value. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. It's money. A yeah. simple answer would be is, if I'm able to run my AI workload without having no checkpointing that I have to go back and all the time deterministically finishing my workload, that will be the resiliency. Then I don't have to worry about what's happening inside system and fabric. But of course, we can talk. Yeah, we'll definitely follow up, sure. <laughs> great, I know, I was going to say, I <laughs> love doing that. That was a great single shot okay. there, though. I, yeah. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I have two more quick questions <laughs> okay. for you. All right. Number one, we talked about herding cats, and I have to ask about the dog on the back of your phone. Oh. <laughs> So cute. And my husky, yes. Oh my gosh, hold that up so the camera can look at how cute this dog right. is. This has been a really pleasant. He's so happy. <laughs> You're going to get all you going to float away. You know, we, we, we let folks say hi to their families sometimes on the show. I felt, you know, I, I'm a dog owner. I feel like it's important to say hi to our dogs at home watching. Obviously, now I sound insane, <laughs> which is great. Uh, last question for you both. You, We did this last year, same time. We're definitely going to do it next year, same time. And hopefully, actually, many times in between. Absolutely. What do you hope to be able to say at Supercomputing 2025 that you can't yet say today? Jim, I'll start with you. Well, I made a strong statement when you asked me that question last year. And I said, we will be talking about 800. It's in the booth. Stop by. Um, next year, this time, we will be talking a lot more about 1.6, where everything doubles. And we'll certainly be talking about the buzz that gets generated as the UEC spec gets ratified and released and we start seeing progress, and we start seeing announcements from our, our friends making silicon, uh, as well as software on how to, how to implement that and you know, the advances. I love it. Over to you. You're good at All the right. claims. We'll definitely be following up with that sound bite. <laughs> yep. yeah, continuing on this trend next year, we'll talk about, again, scale, scale, and scale. 
but also we, we should be able to talk about some of the enhancements we are doing at the solution level, which are already in the works, but it will be more mature next year. So we should be able to talk about those. Okay. Well, we can't wait to host you again. Hamel and Jim, thank you so much for taking the time during such a busy week. Yeah. Thank you for letting us to come and, and yeah. just have a discussion. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Thanks. we're always here to talk hardware, yeah. Huskies, and anything else you've got. <laughs> <on> hardware, <laughs> and Huskies. hardware and Huskies. I'm a UW Husky. Let's go dogs. Might as well just throw that out there. Yeah, not? Not. John, always a blast to hang out with you here on yeah. the desk. Yeah. And I hope you're all having as much fun as we're having here and perhaps cuddling your dog or whatever you might be doing while you're <laughs> tuned in to our three days of live coverage here at Supercomputing 2024 in Atlanta. Georgia. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.